We first met the guys from Longthorn at IWA. And we were fascinated with how strong their barrels were. Subsequently, we had a few emails back and forth and finally arranged a date to go up and see what they do. Oh. We met with Elaine and Alex for a little factory tour and got the chance to test some of these amazing machines. So Johnny, this is where all the process starts. This is where the, the billets of steel come into the factory. And obviously, this is how our barrels start life. Just as a big lump. Just as a big lump, so there you go. Jesus Christ. <laughs> how heavy is that? That's around 27 kilos. Yeah, that's, that is a lump, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah. That is a lump. <laughs> wow. That's cool. What happens, what happens to that? Well, that's, that's how it comes in. So what we do first is obviously we, we face it up to make sure it's nice and flat. Yep. So we've got a perfect start. And then after the magic happens, that's what we turn it into. Wow. Uh, so you're <laughs> losing like probably best part of 25 kilos off of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah down to about 1.3. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, just over 25 kilos we lose. That's not bad going, is it? No. And so, that is just through magical machine. Magical machining. And yeah. a certain amount of handwork as well? Yes, there is, yeah, yeah. Obviously, when it comes off the machines, yep. there's a lot of machining lines in there, things like that. So that all gets polished out by hand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it takes around about 30 to 40 hours machining time. Oh, wow. Um, and that's constant, is con it? Constant, yeah. Or just one, so one machine, you no, plug no, it, it in? It goes on several different machines. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then around about a day, eight hours polishing it, to get it up to a standard. I mean, you're probably contractually obliged to lie at this question, <laughs> but how many go wrong? Or is it just now, that no. perfect? Yeah, it's now just it's that perfect. perfect procedure. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Not saying it was that easy at the beginning, because yeah. back in 2006, when Jim decided that he wanted to, to make develop the long form a, a long form gun, um, in his mind, he wanted a 100% English made shotgun. Mm -hmm. at a price what was affordable. Yeah. Um, so originally, the original plan was to use the method what everyone uses, traditional, yeah, yeah. two tubes soldered together. Yeah, or a monoblock it, monoblock, two tubes yeah. shoved into a box. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> what Jim found is he could not get it right 100% of the time. Yeah. He couldn't get it perfect. And with him being a perfectionist, it has to be right. But, you know, we patent test loads of guns and there, there's always a slight discrepancy. Yep, yeah. Not a lot. Not, Not enough lot, to make no. a difference yeah. in reality, yeah. but it, it, yeah. it's nice, isn't yeah. it, to get it right? Yeah, it's right to get it right. So because he was an engineer, yeah. he looked at it from an engineering point of view and just went, this is mad soldering, putting seven pieces of steel together. Yeah, like a 200, 300 year old technology, yeah. essentially. Yeah, we'll do it out of one piece. Mm -hmm. So he designed it out of one piece and the first set of barrels he ever made out of one piece was about 99% perfect. Oh, wow. It, it took four years to get it 100% perfect. <laughs> so. Wow. Yeah. They are awesome, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, We're not the first people to do it. Really? No. Who did? Who was um, the first? It was Sir James Whitworth, Sir Joseph Whitworth. Yeah. Uh, Whitworth, Whitworth Steel. Fred's. Yeah, yeah. Whitworth Steel. He was the first person back in 1856, from an engineering point of view, who said, modern, mo this is the way to go forward. One piece of steel. But they didn't have They didn't that. have the machinery. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm guessing the barrels were just too heavy back then. Too heavy, they yeah. yeah. They and the steel wasn't quite good enough. No. As much no. as fluid pressed steel is an exciting thing, it's not. It's not, no, no. What is that? <clears throat> Top secret? It is, yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> is it, has it's it got a... stainless properties? No, no, It is no. just a completely it's mild, com no, it's, it's, hardish it's, steel. It's a, a hard steel, it's hardened okay. steel, but it's got a particular molecular structure to it which no one else in gun making uses that steel, the quality of that steel. Compared to normal steel, ours is a lot more expensive. Yeah. Yeah, as a, a starting product. But because of obviously the yeah. steel we use and the process we use to make the barrels, yeah. they're a lot lighter, mm -hmm. Yeah. a lot stronger, and a lot straighter. So, yeah. Which but, is good. Yeah. So do you get different blanks in for different barrel lengths? No, it's always a standard length. Okay. And then we cut that down then. So What's we can the make the longest a, you can make? We, we can make a, easily 32 inch. We can do longer if we needed to. Yeah. We don't like doing it, but we can do 34s. Um, so all the, all the barrel lengths, the blanks are the same. And then we yeah. cut it down to whatever length each particular customer's ordered. 
Awesome. And so. is the, these same blanks will do every caliber? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's the same blank for every caliber, including the side by side. Awesome. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. It's just that obviously on some you've just wasted a little bit more than the others. So you get the barrel steel from Mars. Yep. What about the rest of the steel? The rest, of, all, all the rest of the steel is it's all English steel, yep. all British steel. Um, different grades for different parts of the gun. So this particular piece here, um, that comes as a, a, a large round bar of steel, and then we face it down and we turn that into an action. Yeah. yeah. So there's quite a lot of, Jesus Christ, there's a lot of wastage <laughs> that goes on here in that there sort is. of sense. Yeah. Yeah. But no more than anyone else, I suppose. No, but Just... you can't get the integral strength or the structure to it without unfortunately wasting a little bit of the steel. Yeah. <clears throat> Again, you can see that there's no welding or soldering on there at all. Yeah, and it is one piece. one piece. How did they go with the action design? Or is it just, that's what they designed? Yeah, right. it's what Jim designed when he first did it, nice. yeah. yeah. It's nice, yeah. isn't it? And they're all... Jesus uh, Christ. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky I got with these gains, Sash. <laughs> that's a, a true side lock. Okay. And with the side lock, actually we integrate the bridle on the side lock again, so the side lock is one piece. Yeah, super, super strong. Yeah. Is that just because you can, or is there any... Just because we can. Just because you can. Yeah, yeah. I don't give you that bad, that's too yeah. heavy to stand yeah. around with. <laughs> oh. So, is this straight off a machine, or has this had any hand finishing? No, that's had, yeah, that's had a lot of hand finishing, and okay. there's different machines in the process to make that. So, okay. first of all, we get the billet of steel like that. Mm -hmm. We rough it out into a rough shape of an action. Yeah, and on then a big we, machine, on a, a less machine. refined yeah, machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we, we, we normalise that steel then, so it's like a basic... A, a mild heat treatment. Yeah. And then we put that on then to the the big machine, which I'll show you over in the corner in a minute, to basically finish it to that. But then you'll see in here, these certain pockets in here, what are very sharp. Yeah. What you just can't do, you just can't get the machine tooling so in there. So it's hand filed at no, no, those no. points. So what we use, there's a lot of hand work on it, but what we use to cut these here is um, spark erosion technology. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So that's how we get all these pockets because they're really, really straight. That's all done in-house as well? All done in-house. Every single part of the gun is made in-house. Can we have a look at that machine? Of course you can, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'll show you that. And then this hand polished on the outside to get the finish required? It is, yeah. yeah. And then re-hardened once it's all done? Yeah. And then what we'll do from that point, and then we'll hand polish it, we'll engrave it. Okay. And then we'll harden it. Yeah. And do you colour case harden as well, don't you? We do, yes. Yeah. Do you yeah. What do you do? Do you do that for everything and then polish back? No, 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 no. It, it's, it's just, just if people just if want to case happen, yeah, yeah. Is there any benefit to it? No. Nope. Any negatives to it? Um, yeah, you can't control it. You can't control the process. You can't control the colours. Which I'm guessing kind of doesn't fall in this super engineered yeah, category. Yeah, no, Probably no. makes everyone a little easier here. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But you get people and they go, I, I want the cool case out and I want it to look like that's what they've seen a picture yeah, of. Yeah. Um, but there's no guarantee. If you buy it will three guns, like one of them might, might come out look like that. that. Yeah, yeah. But it's unfortunately the process of cold case hardening. It's it the is, way it is. It's the way it is. It is the way it yeah. is. Yeah. Beautiful. I know we stood yes. on the barrels at Ewa. Yeah. Can we do it again? Of course Even you can. The, I feel like I'm cheating on Ant, but you're a bit heavier than him, so it's a bit more of a test. <laughs> but he is a midget. <laughs> I think, yeah. All right, we'll all agree. They're just a standard empty tube of regular long form barrels. Yeah. It just makes me happy every time. <laughs> So we'll just put that on the edge there, so it's not nice and safe yet. All right, we'll both get on. Yeah, we'll go on. All right, I'm gonna give you. you. Oh, are you gonna come on? The... I'll get on with you. Yeah, let's go on with me. Can we bounce a bit? <laughs> yep. <Whoa. laughs> that is insane, isn't it? <clears throat> that is just truly mad. Why? Why did they make them so hard? Why did they feel the need to make them as hard as they are? It's not. It's, it's just better. Obviously, they're a lot stronger. Lots. Yeah. So it's just the fact straighter. that they are much better. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. And that is better steel and better construction. Better steel and better construction. Yeah. Why don't other people do it? Um, now because they can't. Because everything's patented. Yeah. Um, and it, like I say, you need a lot of expensive machinery to be able to do it, yeah. and the knowledge and as well. As simple as that. It's, it's not just knowing what we do it's actually knowing how we do it mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> and these are never hardened or anything that is no. just good steel yeah is yeah. there a, not a problem with having it so hard no, no. none at all yeah no. you ever got any dent i presume they don't dent no, either no, you can just raise the dents if you if you did ever get a dent if in you them. really did yeah you can try very very hard yeah. i presume yeah but you you won't dent it yeah. Yeah.
It's not bad, is it? Can you, can you not give it a proper whack? Well, it's not mine. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, you're going to put gunsmiths out of business at some point, right? <laughs> You said you were going to the gym. <laughs> well, mate, if I if I thought I could afford to replace these barrels, if I did break them, I well, would break them. <laughs> well, I, the um, I think the the best test we've ever done on them was um, when James packed his Range Rover on them. Oh, I saw that. Did you see, see that? that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He put them on two bits of wood and packed his car on there. So, I think the best test is Sash done on it because he's so meaty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that is, I, mean, I just am completely outstanding by it still. Yeah. But I suppose it shouldn't be seeing as my presumption is those blanks alone, let alone all the way, so it probably cost more than a average gun. Yes, yeah. Um, <laughs> which is what makes these a superb thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, so what happens next in the process? <clears throat> right, so obviously that's how we make the barrels, the actions, everything like that. But again, then all the inside parts of the gun mm -hmm. we make just over here. Let's go and have a look. <clears throat> Man, that's insane. So this machine here, um, just behind there. This is a, it's what's called a sliding head. And basically you can put bars of steel in different thicknesses, different diameter bars oh, of steel. Oh, it's the full length, yeah. The full length of the machine. And it'll make all the small integral parts of the gun. Just, <clears> and it works one, chops it off, works one, chops That's it, it off. That's it, exactly that, yeah. Because obviously we make every single part ourselves. We make our own firing pins. That's small. I guess that's a small gauge firing pin. Yeah, that's just 12 gauge, that one. That's tiny, isn't it? Yeah. Why so small? Well, just because it because can be, I Because suppose. it can be, yeah. Cocking rods, um, all the little threaded inserts for inside the fore end. And that's all made in this All machine. made here. So you buy none of these Small little pins. components in? No, no, we buy nothing in at all. There's no part of our gun what isn't produced in this factory. All the springs, everything we make ourselves. <clears throat> so when it comes to servicing and stuff, you guys we do, do it? it? Or yeah. do you, like, like Parazzi do, and give a little service pack in the box? No, 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 no. All farm bits just don't they, break, they I guess. They, they don't normally, no, no. Obviously, things do wear and tear on the guns, yeah, firing well, pins, springs, things by, like that. By proxy of using the damn yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> and that is a longthorn trigger. That's the longthorn trigger, yeah. Again, that comes from um, a solid, well, that's a solid plate of steel. Mm -hmm. So on the plates of steel for the triggers, we cut four out at a time of a, a round plate about so big. Yeah. That is awesome, isn't it? Yeah. I don't know if we're allowed to. These, these are your small gauge actions. Yeah, yeah, up. different stages. These are, these are just old. That, that's a little 20 gauge action there. That's nice, isn't it? Yeah. With our Hesker uh, deluxe engraving on that one. They are lovely made, aren't they? Yeah. Are they coated in anything or nope. are they so they will get patina over time? No, no, it shouldn't ever. It you is rust free, no. yeah, the action blocks. Yeah. It is yeah. rust free. Yeah. Again, it's the quality of the seal. As opposed to any, anything else. Yeah. So again, we make out all our own springs. So this is a main spring. So are they cut out like that as opposed to folded? Yeah. Right. I'm going to obviously ask the question. Why? 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 It's stronger. So okay. you, if you get a piece of steel, you yep. heat it up and fold it, you're automatically creating a weakness in that point mm -hmm. where you've made the fold. So to get rid of the weakness, to keep the springs as strong as possible, we actually cut them out of spring steel, but flat spring steel, and we wire cut them out in the right shape. That's so amazing. you're not putting the, the weakness point in. You're creating a point of strength, not a point of weakness. And it's good enough. Because <laughs> in my head, obviously, logically, it's not a point of weakness because you're running the grain around. Yeah. But, but think, don't break. No. Not yet. Don't break. No. Don't make them 100 years. <laughs> and they can pay someone yeah. to make some new ones. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. nice, and you do that with all your bits? All the small bits. Yeah, you see that there? That's um, one of the e ejector legs from the forend. Oh, that's fascinating. And where, yeah. what, is, what does the wire cutting machine look like? They see you. Oh, that's unexcitingly yeah. box like, yeah. like everything yeah. here, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so basically, just inside it here, <coughs> can you see? Just down there, you can see a piece of wire that coming tiny down. Little wire. Tiny little wire yeah. there. Right, basically that goes down here, down the tube. You put your plate on whatever you want to make on here. Yeah. Program it, and it'll just literally this tank then fills up with water. Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And then the wire just basically erodes out to whatever shape you want, cuts out. That's to whatever awesome. shape you want. And that goes for 
Safety springs? So, yeah, safety springs. Safety springs made in there as well? Yeah, everything. That's amazing. Yeah, um, that's an auto-safe link. So it and there is no out. downside to this whatsoever? Yes, there is, yeah. You've, okay. Because of the way we do it, yeah. um, and it cuts the bits out of the plate, Yeah. Yeah. you've then got to fish them out at the bottom. Oh, the no. <laughs> <laughs> so you get your hands dirty. <laughs> oh, no, that's <coughs> very cool, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. That's properly cool. Yeah, so that's how we do that. Properly technological, isn't it, the whole yeah, process? Yeah, yes, it is, yeah, um, yeah. Do you find you get a lot of flack for kind of stepping away from the yes. gunsmithery? Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah, we don't need, um, we do, because we do everything our own way and in-house, Yeah. we don't outsource anything at all. <clears throat> so yeah, you do, you do get a little bit of jealousy. Yeah. yeah. Because we're not using the traditional methods of doing it, where you outsource to different outworkers to do an action, our stocking, our finishing, we do everything in house. So yeah, nice. Yeah. That is nice. But you know, that, that way we can control. You can the control the whole process, and yeah. there's there's huge value in that. Like yeah. I yeah, huge value. Yeah. All right. So we've got all your bits. All the bits. What happens next? Right. Well, basically, once you've got the barrels and the bits, we then take them down this end to have them polished by hand. Okay. So I'll show you that, that now. So what we do down here at this end now is that obviously the barrels come down from the manufacturing end at that side. And they are a raw machined Raw machine, point, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and these have actually all been done. I haven't got a set without any polishing marks on. Been working they, too hard, really, yeah. 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 So we'll finish them down to about this kind of finish. So we take all the machining marks off, yeah. any scratches out of them, anything like that, down to about that kind of finish there, about 240 grit finish yeah. on them. And then at that point there then, we send them to the proof. Just in so, case. Yeah. You get any rejections? Presumably no, not no. anymore, like you were saying. No, 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 no. But we send them down to proof, everything's proofed, and then when they come back from the proof house, we then start the work. So they're all connected up to an action when they go to proof. <coughs> yeah. So that's been done at this point as well. Yeah, yeah, we fit them onto the face in the back room, we fit them onto yeah. the action. Yeah, send them down to proof. They come back from proof, and then we actually polish them up. Oh wow, so it's you engrave then polish uh -huh. or polish then engrave? Um, engrave and then polish. Yeah. So you have a perfect... And look at that mirror finish you've got on there. Yeah. Now you've got to have that nice shiny mirror finish on there. To take the black? To take the black, yeah. Any and you're saying the marks. internals are 2000 grit as well, which yes, is yeah, yeah, yeah. equally as nice as the outside. It is, yeah. Which is kind yeah. of rare to see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> that's really very nicely yeah. done. But any little marks or scratches, does really show up when you black them. So we've got to make sure they're all perfect. No, it's very nice. Yep. And you're saying your hot salt black? Hot salt black. And yep. that's because it's the best? We think it is, yeah. 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 Surprised you don't Cerakote. <laughs> keep, it, keep it with a modern theme. <laughs> yeah. What colour would you like your barrels to? Uh, very nice. Yeah. And again, this is where, this is the area we do, because we do our, our own, own gun fitting. Yeah. So this is the area we do the gun fitting down here. And you use tri guns for that, or just nope. you have a selection of guns nope. and what, stick stick bits on yeah, and yeah, basically get it right. we, we have um, a twelve and a twenty gauge. Yeah. Our test guns. The customer comes, he's picked his piece of wood. We roughly machine the stocks to that. A large lump. A large lump. Yeah. And then we fasten that onto our That's test guns. That's all done on CNC as well. It is. Yeah. 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 And then from that point onwards, everything then is done. That man just there chops, takes, adds. G well, Jim does the gun fitting yeah. at the minute, yeah. And everything there is done with the customer present. Nice. So it's a case of. It's a of day's process at this day's point. Process, just sit here yeah. and get it right. Yeah, yeah. And we shape it and make it fit for the customer. Very nice. But at this point, you can change the grip before change the CNC. The yeah, yeah we can. It. Oh, yeah, yeah, if, yeah. The, if you so want. So you can program it, full pistol grips, Prince of yeah. Wales, anything into yeah, the machine anything beforehand. You want. Yeah. As a large lump of wood. Yeah. Do you have a large selection of wood here? Yeah, I'll show you that now. Oh, it's awesome. <clears throat> and because obviously everyone mounts the guns slightly differently, yeah. and we want people to be very consistent when they mount the gun yeah. for the gun fit, we've drawn footprints on. Yeah, we do that in our shoot simulator. We have a little board with wood that yeah. locks people's feet into the yeah, correct yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you take them out to the ground before the final finish and actually have a little shot. Yeah, yeah we do, yeah. Any, yeah. Before any serious polishing has gone yeah, into the woodwork. Yeah, yeah. And that's awesome. I have a little stand in the holes. <coughs> all the people that have stood in these. Yeah, yeah. And if you look just up there, we've got an extremely <laughs> large pheasant. <laughs> that's a good bird, that. Good 30 yards. Have some of that. Do you know what? You're, you're about right there. 
And the amount of people what come and they say it's 50, 60 yards and we, um, Jim's usual thought process is I've done very, very well when I bought the factory. It's a lot bigger than a paper. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, we, uh, we have, it's an eternal argument that every sportsman have. We Luckily, we had a crane at work the other day right. on site, moving a bridge over the river at the back. And we took up one of the guys out, and Dave, one of my lads up there with a range finder, and he goes, how high is that? And he goes, oh, about, about 60 yards. He goes, no, it's about 30. <laughs> I think people like to stretch yeah. their imagination. Yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah. Oh, I shot this 60 yard crosser. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I'm guilty, you're guilty. Yeah, guilty, we man. all are, we all are. <laughs> now, when I was showing you the action before, yeah. and I was saying about the spark erosion, this is the That's, machine, what does it? That looks unimpressive, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so what happens is, <clears throat> basically, it's, it's all com computerised and there's a robot just there as well. Okay. So we'll machine the action at the front of this machine. It'll come into here, the robot will pick it up, it'll put it on here. Yeah. Okay. Shield comes up, I take Shield it. comes yeah. up, yeah. The tank fills up with water. And this here then moves across to wherever we want. And this is, basically, this is a carbon electrode. Yeah. That. And we, we shape them so we get large blocks of carbon. They're very, well, it's a lot, it's carbon, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then we cut whatever shape we want on in that. On a CNC? On, yeah, on the CNC yeah. machine, yeah, yeah. And then we then will spark out the inside of the action. So wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's that's one what we did. That's a basic a top lever. Yeah. But the actual what that was for is cutting a top lever is, hole. Is no, it's actually we used it for um, cutting a holder, a vice for the top lever to go in. But when we use when you milling it and that. things like that, that's yeah. Awesome. So we did that. Um, so again, all the tooling built ones, in house to build. Everything's built nice. in house. Yeah, yeah. So there's an action, and then we've got different, just here. <clears throat> you see it's just slotted there, yeah. and that basically comes so down. How does spark erosion technology work? Right, basically it sends an electric current into the into carbon that, head. And it's underwater. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and it basically just very, very slowly nibbles away. Just burns it out. And burns it out. That's amazing. But it's absolutely accurate. So as square as this will be. So if these are wrong, if this, you're uh, buggered. Yeah, you're buggered, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So as accurate as that awesome, is, it? it'll make it. That is awesome. Do they last a while, the carbon heads? Uh, they do wear out. You'll, you'll, you'll get, usually we change them every four actions, we'll change it for a new one. Just to make sure, because we want it really, really sharp. Yeah. So we'll change it quite often. You do often. want it perfect, like yeah. you say, so. Yeah. Not. You could use, get a lot more used out for of these it. as well, or not? No, no, no. These no. are just lying they're, around. Yeah, they're, they're just off the new side by side. And they're just the temporary plates, what we've been using when we've been checking Before everything. Before we go to the wood room, can we just have a quick look at that side side in the white over there? Is that? Of course you can, yeah. Yeah, come on, yeah. why not? So this one's been around a few shows and one thing or another, it's not a working gun. It's literally just a prototype, but it's one what we use now for doing the stock fitting and things like that. Very nice, isn't it? Well, like you say, once it's actually all finished-ish, it's less heavy than the barrels were already. Yeah, yeah. In the unfinished state. Yeah. And they're only connected by the top lift? Yep. And that's strong enough? Yep. That doesn't, doesn't, that doesn't come off. Doesn't nice, isn't it? Yeah. In I'll show you some engraved side by side actions in a minute. I'll show you some engraved ones. It's a good looking gun for what it is. Yeah. In a 12 bore, it's a good looking yeah. gun. At that stage, anyway. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, yeah. I've always fancied. So, did you see that Brett SL3 that did mirror, mirror polish? That you yeah. Got? Yeah, I kind of like that. <laughs> I, do. I, do, I do really like that. Yeah. So, this is our wood room. So, got a good selection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, we, we need some more actually. We're desperate for some more wood, but we usually have anything up to 800 pieces at a time in here. Wow. Um, and what we do is we put them around in different orders for th their ages and so we can control the drying process of them. So you, you buy them semi-dried? No, we, we always try and buy it as dry as possible, yeah. but you always buy But you buy have your some, better ones yeah, around to the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. where do you source from? Just, just one all source Turkish, Turkish walnut. Yeah, all Turkish walnut. We have tried others, but Turkish walnut always seems to be the best. Yeah, it's, but it's good value for what you're looking at as well. Yeah, yeah. It lasts, it's hard, yeah. less wastage. And so basically, um, we, when we, uh, with clients, we, we bring them in and they can select their own piece of wood. Nice. And so. how do you work your grading process? Do you have a standard grade and then you just purchase upgrades on top of it? Or is uh, it just yeah. a free-for-all? 
Uh, no, 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 no. Yeah, no, yeah. Basically, that's it, that's it. With depending okay. which gun yeah. you buy, you get different grades of wood. What's the nice bit of wood you got in here? It, it, it's so personal. Um, me personally, I like. I'm going with you on that. And if the a bit of water on tiger that, stripe and things like that. Yeah. yeah. I'll get some white spirit actually and show you what it looks like. No, One awesome. second. Yeah. Personally, I like wood like this kind of pattern. But it's so personal, you've got different people who like different things, so. We have a wide selection, so you, you can choose whatever you like. That is nice. And that's in your top grade kind of Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. What does the base grade bit look like? Like that sort of Yeah, thing? something like that there, yeah. Still yeah. not bad, so. Still nice, yeah. Compared to a lot of wood, it's still nice. Yeah, let's come up. It's not a horrible looking bit of wood, is it? No, no. It'll do. But again, it's as beauty as in the eye of the beholder. It, it is, yeah. It really yeah. is. And the beauty of this is that, so every single gun you do is custom? Yes. Every yeah. single gun? Every single gun. The box locks, what we're starting to do, they're not. Mm -hmm. But there is an option to upgrade and have a custom, have a custom stock, stock on if top. you want to. Yeah. yeah, but as standard, it'll be more of an off-the-shelf yeah, type yeah. gun. But all the side locks, every single one, is custom made. Nice. And so, grip types, palm swells? Anything you want. Anything you want. Yeah, yeah. You done a crossover yet? No, no. Would, would you attempt it? We could. Give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> we've seen a few strange ones where customers have brought them in. Mm. Yeah, but we've never done one. Um, yeah, because we, we take into account things like that when we're doing the gun fit. Yeah. So, so, so diff different shapes, different thicknesses, so you can pick what suits you. And so when, when you're building your gun, you can pick any stock shape, any foreign shape. Yeah. Have you ever had anything that you had to advise against? Said that's just going to look shite. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure most people go for that sort of London rounded American finish. Yes, they do, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. much more common, isn't it? Yeah. There's some nice bits there. Yeah. So you can you compose a gun for someone to try before you before they actually have it built? We do have some guns what we can let people try, yeah. 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 No, it's yeah. Very nice, isn't it? So this bit here is where once the parts are made outside. Yep. They come through here, and this is where they're assembled. So and the engineering is completed, and the gunsmiths get involved. Yeah, the gunsmiths get involved in here. And these guys <coughs> are trained here, or? Um, yeah, Owen's been trained here. Yep. Um, Hi, Owen. <laughs> <laughs> the stack wasn't trained here. Stack was trained at the Liège School in Belgium. Nice. Yeah, Stack had five years at Liège School in Belgium, and then started here in June this year. Yeah. yeah. July, July. July. July this year. Enjoying it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and Owen's um, basically done his apprenticeship and everything. Yeah, yeah nice. from day one here. So, yeah, nice. so that's just an over and under one there. What well, Owen's working on. So it's on. assembly and finish that happens here. Yeah. I take it. Yeah. And here's the. the I said we've got the side by sides. This is the action. Everything inside working, which he's going to go to proof next week. Similar lock design to the over and under. I take it. It is. Yes. Yeah. 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 Same. Same. Yeah. Well, that's convenient. That's a good looking thing, isn't it? And all the engraving is done here as well. All the engraving is done in house, yeah. yeah. So what model side by side is this? That's just a, a 12 gauge, um, uh, like a Nouveau design engraving. It's good looking. Yeah. It is good looking. And this is completely machined, completely machined, apart from the hand finished polish on top. Hand finished polish, machine yeah. machine engraved. Yeah. No, no this, on this particular one, we, we use a, uh, different technologies, okay. depending, without being too rude about it, what the customer wants to pay for. Yep. So we can offer anything from yeah, um, machine, machine engraved to, to full hand, hand finish, finish to full hand, full hand engraving. Yeah. Do many people opt for that? Um, a few, a few. Yeah, really. It's, it's, if they want something really unusual and something really different. Yeah. So there's a there's a finished gun. Quite nice when they're all put together, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. What do you finish the wood with? Do it's all oil. Oh, yeah. Oil finish. Yeah. Just your own mix. Yeah. Very nice. And the gold you're saying is all put in by hand? All inlaid by hand and engraved, yeah. Lovely, isn't it? How long can you expect one of these to last uh, before you know you need to rejoin it or do anything like that? You shouldn't ever need to, really, to be really? honest, yeah. They are yeah. that hard? Yeah, that hard, yeah, yeah. All we recommend is, you know, we recommend having serviced every 10,000 rounds. Yeah, yeah, but that's Every it. couple of months for a man like you or I. <laughs> <coughs> oh, fantastic, aren't they? If something does go wrong with them, what is it? 
or do they just not really? They, they, they don't really, no, no. Nice, isn't it? Yeah. Trying to pick out flaws, but there aren't, <laughs> there aren't many, are there? Hopefully. There aren't many. Man, that is really very nice. So this is a Renaissance. A Renaissance. Renaissance so this is the yeah. top of the top of the yeah. top of the pack. Yeah. yeah. So what models do you do currently? Although it is expanding rapidly. It is. Yeah. 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 So we start at the Hesker. Yep. Which is with the like a very minimalist style engraving. We've got the Hesker with well, the Rose and Scroll, Hesketh Deluxe, the Celtic, which is a very popular one. Yep. The Nouveau. The, the Celtic the, is nice though. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very popular. And then the Renaissance. Very nice. And so you've, you've just released the Sporter. The Sporter. This year. Yep. And the Box Locks coming out beginning of next year. Wow. And that'll be out Very in nice. three models. And the Rifle will be out next year as well. Wow. It's going to be good. Yeah. With a side by side all to, to boot to ram it, it all yeah, home. Yeah, side by side, yeah. And the trigger is non selective, I take it? You can have selective if you want. Really? Uh, yeah. It's, nice. Just yeah, makes it less just, beautiful yeah, looking. Yeah. Or is the selector on the trigger? No, no, it's a, in the same catch. You can't really fault how that looks, to be fair. No. That is a good looking gun. Thank you very much. You're welcome. You've got some awesome technology. Yeah, the last room for three or what? Uh, I'd want a 12 ball. <laughs> <laughs> of course, there's some awesome stuff that we haven't shown you, um, but I've seen, so there. <laughs> and it's just held by those, so it's a double locking lump at the bottom is the action, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's where the back goes in, yeah. And all of the, Ejects to engrave with the caliber? Yes, yeah, we do that's, that, yeah. That's quite cute, isn't it? <laughs> it is nice, isn't it? You see there's just a lot of love and attention in every detail, which is really yeah. smart. And I think you're getting a lot of... I'm going to say you're getting a lot of value for money. I guess you really are, actually. Between this side and that side, yeah. you're getting the best of both worlds. Yeah. If you yeah. want a superbly engineered gun, you're getting one. Yeah. And if you still want a good old-fashioned, hand-finished, English gun. You're getting that as well? You're getting one. Although, yeah. I think you're struggling to find a completely handmade English gun now. Yes. But they're all yeah. involve a lot of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. The majority. Do, yeah. Yeah. yeah, they do. And or a lot of imported parts. A lot of imported parts as well, aren't yeah. they? Yeah. Whereas the only thing you guys import is wood and steel. Yep. And a gunsmith. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it is nice, isn't it? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. So as you do with any of these things, you hear a lot of rumours. Um, you hear that they're kicky. Everyone says they're kicky. I don't think anyone's actually shot them. Uh, I mean, they're only 21 grams, but it doesn't kick at all. It points extremely well. It's a lot quicker than you'd expect. You don't want to be sort of planning or swinging too much because it will just go like where you want it way too quick. So I made the mistake. We sort of had a shot with the 16 ball before this and I try and shoot it like my gun, I was aiming over there whilst the clay was still coming out the trap. And I shoot a few more. Oh! Oh! I could get used to this. <laughs> Depressingly. <laughs> Always been a champagne taste kind of guy. This is a 12 bore. To say that it shoots very, very similarly to a 20 bore but feels in the hand like a 12 ball. So it fills your hands properly. Handles like a 20. Kills like a 12. Sounds like a recipe for success. Anyway, let's see if we can do that again. Just make it harder, so let's turn. Pull! Pull! Let's go back there. So 
before we move on for this absolute stunner 12 ball, uh, we're just going to shoot a quick round of skeet, just a quick simo power on each stand, just see how it moves about really. Pull! Pull! Do it all, can it? Strangely enough, it's a great skeet gun and a great sport trap gun. A driven pheasant gun. Better than a Marook? Yeah, unfortunately so. I actually genuinely prefer this to my own gun. Which, by the way, takes a huge amount for me to say that. It's as lively as my gun, but about a pound lighter, but just as well rounded and cleaner. What do you want first? Mate, do what you want to do, live your best life. Low, please. Should have brought me one. <laughs> when you're ready. Ball. Come on, ready. <laughs> <laughs> what a gun, eh? So, what's your secret? What? My secret is to put loaded cartridges in the gun. Oh! We're on our cartridges now. I'm going to have to fall out of love right now. It's getting expensive otherwise. Oh, yeah, I think that's real nice. Oh, genuinely. My only qualm with it, and that's where it's just a little bit lighter than Rook, is if you forget that, and given I was shooting the Rook here on Monday, and it's now Wednesday, just have to remember consciously that if you shove it and move, this gun reacts a lot quicker than you'd expect, or a lot quicker than I'm used to, certainly. Um, but every time you remember it, bang, absolutely exactly where you want to be. Um, and I'll bear in mind this gun doesn't fit me for toffee, and it's still unbelievably shootable. I was going to say this one, this is uh, the 16 gauge that one on Hesketh Deluxe. What is the difference between a Hesketh and a Hesketh Deluxe? It's um, the engraving style, really. Just this a little is, bit deeper, yeah, more involved. Yeah, more involved. This is the acanthus leaf style engraving on this one. And this is actually a Jim's gun. Uh, the one what this Jim is the boss. Is. This is Zero the number number three. Yes, That's yeah. That's it. <laughs> so, how old is this one? It'll be one of the originals. One of the originals, of the originals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten years old. Yeah. yeah. Best part of it. Yeah. Let's give it a go. Yeah. See how it works. Yeah, definitely. Whoa. Strangely enough, both 21 gram cartridges, but this kicks less than right. the 12, right. I think. Right. Hold on. Very different, either way. Yeah, yeah. Whoa. There we go. Pull. This one almost actually shoots itself. I like that. I never <laughs> thought I'd like a 16 over the 12. Jesus. <laughs> Well, it's that one out the tower behind you. And we'll put it about three foot in front of it and pull the trigger. All right? The safety catch up, though. Yeah, that's it. Right. That one coming from there. I'm losing my flexibility. Hold on. Do you want me to put this in slow mo? Hold on, hold on. Let me just.
Yes, well done. I bloody didn't touch it. You did? It? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, you did, honestly, you got it. Well. You did. 50% <laughs> ratio. <laughs> don't, don't like to brag. Go on, open it up. Just open it all the way, because it won't reset if you don't. That's it. <clears throat> but you got it. 50% ratio, well. <laughs> no, quite. I'm really Oh, old. bloody hell. Was I too far in front or behind? No, them? you seem, you, you just right because you, you took the front edge off it. Okay. Right. Pull. Right in the middle. Woo! He's a natural. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do this last one now because I know I'm going to miss. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> I've got nothing to say. This is the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best day of my life ever. <laughs> I don't, hold on. It's the gun. <laughs> <laughs> this is remarkable. In my experience, having shot three guns, this is by far the best. This is the only one I managed to hit a bloody thing with. It must be good. This is the best cosign you could possibly have. It's just you can shoot some it. Get it. But mate, I think we should change positions because I got every single shot on camera and you broke all the clays. <laughs> they went into this with a real open line, to be honest, mate. Because um, you never know what you're going to get. And I've shot a lot of expensive guns that just turned out to be the same as cheap ones. Right. Cheap ones. <laughs> yeah. Averagely priced ones. Yeah. I genuinely am really, really impressed. I love that 12 ball. And I like this a lot too, but the stock is just a little low yeah, and I'm not yeah. getting that consistent mount and that's my excuse. <laughs> <laughs> but that 12 was an absolute demon, absolutely hammering it with it, loved it. But they are, they do for a machine, mo mostly machine made gun, have a lot of soul. Yeah. I, that's kind of what I look for in a gun, I don't know about you. Yeah. The ability to pick it up and... I feel it. Can, yeah, yeah it just to actually natural. get with it and go, yeah, yeah I, this is a... Yeah. As I call it, a killing stick. But yeah. it is yeah. yeah. This is a machine that I am gonna enjoy shooting. Yeah. But you do need to shoot it to feel that and they do just they glide. Which one would you buy if you were to buy one? Or which one do you shoot, seeing as you have the pick of the bunch? I do like the 60. I've got to swap me, yeah. I do like the 60. And your favourite yeah. engraving pattern? Uh either I, I do like them. I like the I like the deluxe, I like the Celtic, and I like the Renaissance. Yeah. The, the big boys. Yeah. yeah. We haven't got a sporter here to shoot today, which is a shame. Nope. Have you shot it? Yes. What do you make yeah. of it? Fantastic. Is it way up against other sort of high-end competition sporters? Yes, definitely. Yeah, it's very, very easy to shoot. Yeah. Just a little bit heavier. A bit heavier, yeah. yeah. Nice. And you get that custom spec stock with that sporter side plate? Uh, yeah. Not a standard. But you can do. But you can do, yeah. Okay. And what yeah. does that roll out if someone wanted to come get a custom competition gun from you? Well, they start at 11995 yep. and go up from there. Okay. Yeah. Depending on Depending when on you go into that wood room. Yes. <laughs> if you can control yourself at all. Yeah. That's it. Um, I think that would be the hardest part of the process in yeah. that room, just in to go, room. I want the nicest one. <laughs> yeah. Because once you've done it, once you're committed, you might as That's well it. commit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Guys, I've thoroughly enjoyed this experience. Thank you so much. You're for, welcome. Thank you. Um, allowing us to shoot it and showing us around. Like I said, there's some amazing stuff that you will never see or know. That's part of the mystery. That's it. That's the mystery that of one. to film. remain yeah. part of this gun. And yeah. it, what a thing. What a thing. Thank you again. Thank you. It was a real privilege to get shown around the factory. And believe me, there's a lot that we couldn't show you. A few people have said for the money, you'd want it to be an extension of your body. And these guns really are. They are so, so very, very nice. And finally, a thank you to Longthorn for allowing us to make this video, to share it with the masses. Thank you to Elaine and Alex for your amazing hospitality, delicious sandwiches, and for answering all of our questions. Take care, guys. Thank you very much for watching. It's been brilliant, and we'll see you next time.